Hey, so welcome back and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called minimum swaps to group all ones together. And basically you do exactly that. So you're given some binary data in an array called just data here. And you want to group all the ones in that array together. And they can be in any place. So they don't have to be clumped together on the left side or the right side or the middle. You can kind of group them together in any place that you want. Um, this is a good example here where you can see they just show you all the possible ways you can group all the ones together in the array. Um, but what you want to output is the minimum number of swaps in order to do that. And so that's pretty much it. You want to, it's a minimization function um, or a minimization algorithm where you just swap them, all the values in this array so that all the ones are grouped together. Uh, but you want to do this with the minimum number of swaps possible. So for this first one, you can see that the output is one here. And that's because, well, we could just take this one here and put it here, which is just one swap, and then they're all grouped together. You could also do it, say, delete this one here and put that one there. Or um, what's the other one? Yeah, so it, you just vary whichever one you delete and place, uh, but it only requires one swap. And so for this one, since you're just giving one value, you don't have to swap anything because when you have just one one, it's just already clumped together. So how you actually want to do this is a sliding windows function. It's a popular kind of algorithm uh, pattern that you see a lot in the code. And essentially what a sliding window is, is you kind of define a window size for a particular array with like a set of numbers here. And you basically just kind of slide this window across. So initially say it's this numbers and then you kind of move it over one and then you slide it over. It's supposed to kind of specify a range of values. And typically you keep track of, okay, what does this currently contain? Um, and the reason why you want to do that is essentially you can just count the number of ones in here, which is three, and that's going to be the size of our window. And so initially we're going to say, okay, our window size is three here. And so then we're keeping track of, okay, how many, um, basically how many zeros are in this array. And so what that means is since we have a window size of three, and that's the number of ones in this entire data array, then at any point, we can just count the number of zeros to get the number of swaps that we need in that window. And so in this case, when we're looking at the first three numbers, we know that since there's one zero in here, we'll have to make one swap. And so that's the current minimum. And then if we move this window function over one, essentially now you just count the number of zeros and now we have two zeros. And so then the number of swaps, if you wanted to clump them together at this point would be two. And essentially you just slide that window across, keep doing that over and over again. Now you don't actually have to actually uh, count the number of zeros. As you're sliding it across, all that you have to do is kind of keep track of the left pointer and the right pointer. And so whenever a one leaves from the array, so if the left pointer moves over and that last kind of previous number was a one, then you're just kind of incrementing the total count by one. Since you know if a one is leaving the window, then naturally we're gonna need one extra swap. And then kind of the exact same thing is when we have this window, whenever a one enters the window, then that will mean that, okay, we can subtract one from the total count because, well, we already have one in this kind of clump that we no longer need to move over. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, I think the, uh, the algorithm is pretty self-explanatory, so uh, why don't I show it to you? So initially, I just like to define like the length of this array because often you use it a lot. And then we're just going to get n, and that's gonna be the number of ones inside of this total array, so it's basically going to define our a window size or the size of the clump that we're trying to make. And so what that's going to be is we can just do data dot count uh, one to count all the ones in here. Um, that's a bit generic, so I like it this way. You could also do like some uh, data. This also works since it's just ones and just count all the values in this. Um, and then from here, what we're going to want to do is typically I like to just kind of enqueue the first n size values. 
And so initially you kind of create that window and then we slide it across. And so initially we're going to want to figure out in our initial window how many swaps would we need to do. And so that's initially going to be the minimum swaps. And to get that, we basically want to count the number of zeros in this uh, range. And so what that is, is just we can slice the array in the size of n, and then we just count the number of zeros in here. Oh. Um, you could also do like, um, you could also sum it and then just subtract n from it too, if you wanted to. Oh, I can't really type, there we go. And so this is also another way to count the number of zeros if you wanted to. Uh, but anyway, so I prefer doing it like this. And so we'll also wanna kind of define the current running uh, minimum swaps or the current running swaps that we currently need in the current window, but we're also maintaining the minimum number of swaps that we need here. Okay, so this is throwing an error, but I'm not sure of why right now. Oh, it's because uh, I have a comma here. There we go. And so from here, we're gonna wanna return that minimum swaps, but initially we're only looking at the first window size, and we're going to want to analyze all possible like, combinations here. And so let's just iterate through all of these values uh, in our data but then we're just going to want to look at um, in a particular range. And so that's going to be from uh, n here because we don't really need to consider what we've already put into our window. So everything beyond this window size and then to the length of our array. Okay, and so with each iteration, what we're going to be doing is recalculating the new min swaps and we're just comparing it with the current and the current minimum oh, with the current but we want to be recalculating the current number of swaps that we need to do in this new window and that's using the algorithm that I just kind of explained to you where okay what if a value leaves the window and when, an out, when a value enters the window we want to increment and decrement the number of swaps that we would need to do and so first let's just chat about um, numbers leaving and so what that's going to represent is just okay we're at index i and so we're going to be looking at the data at i uh, minus n and so what that's going to be is basically the beginning of our window and so we're looking at okay which value is that kind of the start of our window and just now leaving and so if this is a one then we're gonna to want to increment it. So that's gonna be okay, our current is gonna be incremented if this is a one that's leaving our window. Otherwise, we're going to want to also decrement whenever a value is entering our window because that's one less like one that we'll have to include in that clumping and move over. Like it's already in our clump that we're trying to make in our window, and so we can kind of ignore it. So that's just going to be data at i. So let me just think here. I think this looks good. So this is numbers leaving. This is numbers entering. So let's go ahead and run this. Accepted. And success. So yeah, that's uh, today's algorithm. So essentially it runs in O of n time complexity. So you're just going to have to iterate through all the values in this array. And then we're not using any extra data structures here, just like two pointers representing our window. And so, yeah, I hope it helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.